Hello, welcome to episode five of Office Hours with the Math Sorcerer. In today's episode, I'm going to be answering a very interesting email that I received from a viewer. His name is Robert, and the subject is a mathematician's dream. The message reads as follows. It has been my dream since I can remember to become a world-class mathematician. Part of this dream included attending and search your favorite prestigious private research institution here for graduate school. After doing everything I could think of myself to distinguish myself as an undergraduate, I was unable to attain entry into such a program. I know I shouldn't have my self-worth tied up in the name of the university from which I obtained my PhD, but academic jobs are extremely competitive. With my current position, which you will easily be able to deduce from my email address, I feel I will be unable to secure a dream job at a top-tier research institution and instead will have to go into industry. Of course, there's nothing wrong with going into industry, but it was never my dream. I have spoken with faculty in the department and they seem to agree with this sentiment, though are probably unlikely to say so except behind closed doors in hushed tones. Due to this incongruity between my life's dream and reality, I have suffered from bouts of extreme depression, at times not even being able to get out of bed. I want to get my life back on track, but the situation feels hopeless. I was unable to attend a fancy undergraduate program due to lack of financial resources, and I feel like I'm on a perpetual cycle of punishment because of it. Not attending a top undergraduate program affected which graduate programs would consider me, and attending the graduate program I'm currently attending is se severely limiting future job prospects. Do you have any advice as how I can get my life back on track, or am I too far gone? Well, Robert, um, I, have, I have a lot of advice for you, and I'm going to be completely honest in my response, and I will do the best I can to help you because it sounds like you are having a, a really, really hard time, a really hard time by the tone of your email. So let me just start saying that when I was in college, there was a psychology club. I wasn't part of it, and they had a really catchy slogan. And that slogan was, perception is reality. Okay? And if you're in a really bad situation, you can tell yourself that perception is reality and you can tell yourself to perceive it positively, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense because your situation is so bad. However, in your case, I really think that you're in a really good position. From my point of view, it sounds like you're doing amazing. So first of all, from an outsider's point of view, and I'm an outsider here, you are college educated. You got a degree probably in mathematics because you're currently in a PhD math program at a very good school. I see your email address. I won't mention the school here. I like to keep everything anonymous here. And yeah, so you got into a PhD program at a top school, which is amazing. It's not like, you know, top 10, but it's still an extremely good school. And so you're probably going to get your PhD from a really good school. So I think that is incredible. That puts you so far ahead of, you know, other people if you're comparing yourself to other people. You say your dream was, you know, to teach at a top school. And you are right if you look at, you know, the faculty members at any top school. You know, you go to Princeton or Harvard or MIT. You look at the people who work there, even, even faculty members at really good schools like your school. You know, a lot of them went to Yale, Harvard. You know, they come from really top schools. They hire the best of the best. Uh, the academic world, especially in mathematics at the PhD level, is extremely competitive. So it's going to be a challenge. But I really don't think that's a reason to give up. And I don't think it's a reason to be sad. I think instead of focusing on what you haven't achieved, focus on what you have achieved and be proud of it. Be happy because I think you are amazing. I really think you've done so much with your life. And it's really incredible. At the same time, you shouldn't give up. But you should also realize that giving up is, you know, part of life in some sense. Having failure is part of life in some sense. You're going to have challenges and you're going to fail at those challenges. And it's how you deal with those failures, how you can come back from that, that really makes you stronger as a human being. 
Um, you know, you always you always have the story of like Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb. You know, he had to try multiple times until you know he was able to succeed. That's the way it is for people who are successful. A lot of times they try, 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 they fail, 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 and then finally they get that one success, and that gives them opportunity. The road you're taking is a hard one, and your goal is a hard one, so it's going to be tough. And I think you're doing awesome. You mentioned uh, going into industry, so I want to talk about that. I, I do think that there is a benefit to exploring other things and other areas of life. It, it opens your mind. It makes you a stronger human being. I think it's good for you. I, I really think it is. You know, before I went to college, I had a bunch of terrible jobs, and they were horrible. You know, I washed dishes. I, I you know, I, I cleaned toilets, cleaned toilets for a while. I mean, I was a security guard. That was terrible. All kinds of terrible jobs, telemarketer. And I'm not saying, you know, those are bad jobs. If you have a job and you're listening to this, you know, I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just saying I had some really bad jobs and with really bad bosses. And, you know, it's it's not really fun to clean toilets and it's not really fun to cold call people and ask them to sign up for a credit card deal. So there's other things you can do in life. And it sounds like you're doing great. But those things, you know, those experiences that you have, they make you stronger because they, expose you to things that you haven't seen. I'm grateful for having the opportunity to work at a telemarketing company. I'm grateful for having the opportunity to clean toilets at a chemical plant. Uh, you know, those are jobs that I feel gave me some life experience and I think they're beneficial. I think by you going into industry, you're going to get that life experience. Also, you're extremely intelligent. Think about this, you know, you're in a PhD program and I'm assuming you're going to finish, but let's just say you don't finish. Think about all the people who have studied mathematics, who have done amazing things. Let's start with Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, uh, if you don't know who he is, I'm sure you do, he founded Amazon. He studied physics, and he had an interaction with his friend. He was trying to solve a partial differential equation, and he couldn't do it, and it made him feel stupid, right? It made him feel dumb, and that's when he decided that moment was when he told himself, yeah, I'm not, I'm not cut out for the match PhD, because... He felt like he couldn't do it. He felt like he didn't have the ability to do it. He probably could have. He probably would have had to work really hard, but he didn't. Instead, he worked as an investment banker and then founded Amazon. Amazon is a huge company now. Everyone uses Amazon. I love Amazon. I buy so much stuff from Amazon, and it exists thanks to a math-trained person like Jeff Bezos. James Simons, he was a, a successful PhD student then a successful professor of mathematics, a successful researcher, and he was the chair, I believe, at Stony Brook. So he already had a great job at a great school, and he quit. He quit his job, and he founded one of the most popular hedge funds in the history of the world, right? I mean, he became a billionaire on his own. Right? I mean, he had some help, and he worked with the people, but a mathematician, right? That's what he was, and that's what you are. You're a mathematician, and you're smart. Um, I collect uh, Magic the Gathering cards, I forgot I have the camera on here. This is a podcast, so. Um, and I love Magic the Gathering paraphernalia. And that was invented by a mathematician. Richard Garfield is the man who invented Magic the Gathering. He was a mathematician. He had a PhD. So I think that you should aim higher and not negate industry, not look at it as, oh, hey, you know, I'm trying to get into a really good school. I didn't, but I got into a pretty decent school and I'm in a PhD program, you know, my life is over. Instead, try to think of it as I am smart. I am capable. I am highly intelligent. I got a math degree. I got into a PhD program. Not just that. You got into a very good PhD program and it sounds like you're doing okay. You mentioned nothing about, you know, not uh, doing well. So I think your situation is amazing. I think you're doing great. And I, I think there's all kinds of opportunity and I think you're going to have a great life. But I do think that you should keep your mind open and, um, you know, expect more challenges in the future. Everyone faces adversity. It's it's part of life, you know, and life is wonderful. Don't give up. I think you can do amazing things with your life. You're a smart individual. And as the rapper Nas used to say back in those songs from the 90s, the world is yours. Anyways, that's it for this episode of the podcast. Robert. I hope I have been helpful to you. Hopefully anyone else listening to this has gotten something from this. And if you get anything from this podcast, it's that, you know, things are usually better than you think they are. You know, perception is reality. And you, you can take that statement and you can twist it up and you can apply it to someone 
you know, in a terrible situation. But for most of us, you know, things are a lot better than you think they are. Good luck. Until next time, take care.